Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Merchant's Cove. The expansion though, Mastercraft, which is currently on Kickstarter. This is a game about choosing a very specific and unique type of worker placement for yourself and working on a board in the middle of the table that everyone utilizes. And the objective of the game is to sell whatever it is that you're trying to sell to the people arriving to port. Now, in the original game, there is a wide variety of people you can choose from. There's potion makers, there's dragon tamers, and all, all, all kinds of stuff. There's like a guy who does like a blacksmithy type of a thing. And in the expansion Mastercraft, at least what we have to show you here, are four new additional different type of crafters for the merchants, uh, for, for the uh, customers that you're going to be delivering to off of the port yes. here. We have the pastry chef, we have the treasure diver, we have the mushroom farmer, and we have a detective solving mysteries. And they'll each be utilizing their boards and unique type of play styles to sell to the customers arriving to port. In the game, the base game for Merchant Scove, it's very, very simple. Uh, it's quite a bit of setup, but it's simple nonetheless. Mm -hmm. You choose your character, uh, you get all the stuff that it corresponds to, and then you're going to get a piece of paper that illustrates what you need to do for setup and how everything works. So everybody gets to read their own custom rules. Mm -hmm. And then there's a base game. The base game is actually really simple. You've got the boats and the people. You're going to have the victory track. You're going to have uh, these guys here, which you can purchase to give yourself additional bonus points in the game. Mercenaries and, and tourists yeah. to help you out. <laughs> uh, there's a time tracker, which is kind of a rondelle that as you spend mm -hmm. actions, AKA time, uh, the people in the farthest back on the top are going to be the ones going first and you'll just be moving along the board there, uh, allowing new people to show up in the boats until they get filled to then come to the ports. In which case, once all the ports are filled, then you're going to sell whatever you have to the people based on their color and you get multipliers and that kind of thing. There are dangerous cards as well like these guys here. Um, what are these corruption guys called? Cards. Corruption cards that can give you negative points uh, based on the different types of rogues that we might be dealing with. There's different factions of heroes as well as rogues like Michael mentioned that you can also gain favor with those different factions. And so your objective is to sell to these guys. Uh, the game will go by at a, for a certain number of rounds and whoever has the most victory points on this track here at the end is the winner. Uh, and that's basically the idea of the game. Now we're not going to go ahead and go into details as to how the game is set up and all that kind of stuff because I have a playthrough video and I have a review video slash walkthrough slash playthrough video of Merchant's Code, the original game down in the description, yes. Yeah. She's like, she wants yes. to show you yeah. the, the whole link. <laughs> there yes. it is. <laughs> uh, so what instead we're going to do is we're going to just review and cover basically all the unique new characters, because we've played them all, um, and talk to you about what they do and whether or not this should be an expansion that you'd like to pick up right now. First off, the Mushroom Farmer. The Mushroom Farmer is unique in that it's, I think, the only character so far that does not have an individual standee. Instead, you have little different uh, insect characters that are helping you farm mushrooms and also a set of action tiles. So instead of placing the standee on an action space and doing those actions, you instead place down a tile and do those actions utilizing one or more of the insects in the space. It's kind of like a hex grid type yes, of thing where you're yes. trying to manipulate the board and So like there's a whole it. cycle of life that happens with the mushroom farming where you have uh, you want to uncover the mushrooms, help them grow, then harvest the spores, and then um, sort of compost and recycle that land in order to get it ready to farm more mushrooms. So there's a whole cycle of life happening and in addition, instead of just um, from the spores, you combine the spores to create mushrooms in your grow box and you can combine smaller mushrooms to create the large mushrooms which are both the small and the large you can sell at the docks. Kind of reminds me of those mushrooms that you'd buy in a box and then you water it and they kind of expand and grow and the longer <laughs> you wait the bigger they're going to get. It's yeah. kind of like that, right? Where you're trying to manipulate the mushrooms to get to be exactly the type of thing you want to do and you use the bugs to do that. Yeah, you, you, utilize, you have to utilize the insects really well and the action tiles because that's kind of how you get your favor with the different factions is if you can wait long enough before taking back all your action tiles, then you can gain ben benefits. And if you want to do an action that you've just previously done a round or two, you're going to take corruption. 
Mm, nasty. Mm. Uh, let's talk about the diver. The diver is kind of like uh, what's that wonderful game with the weird name? Quacks of Quedling Quacks of Quedlingburg. Yeah. Uh, basically, it is a game where you are diving, trying to find pearls and nets and all kinds of goodies, mm -hmm. and you're attempting to utilize those to then buy, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, uh, different Things items to put in your bag so you can continue to dive. And then eventually <laughs> you'll be getting out these, buying these necklaces and buying these tiki's, Crafting and you'll them, and you'll selling yeah. them. Yeah, exactly. And the way it works is you're digging into the bag. You'll dig a certain number of times. You'll select a certain number. So it's kind of like a mix of quacks, and it's kind of like a mix of um, what's that nightmare game uh, the, where you're pulling the dice out of the bag? Oh, lucidity. Lucidity. It's kind mm -hmm. of a little bit like that because you choose how many you kind of want to go, and yeah. you can kind yeah. of choose if you want to continue from there. You choose your bag side first. Like and how you're pulling far am I going to try to and die? Pulling, and you're going to get get crabs for negative stuff and like messing you up and hurting mm -hmm. you and of course the increasing amount of time it takes yeah uh, and then you can get good stuff you can get gems and maps and all kinds of things that you can utilize and so it's kind of like a push your luck style game push um, your luck bag builder style. that also has yeah. um a unique like worker placement to an extent it's very light mm -hmm. though it's either you go you to choose which beach you want to go to if you want to purchase things or you want to craft yeah, so you there's wanna, that choice as you can well. also like do i want to dive okay now do i want to purchase a craft and you can mm -hmm. Choose where you want to go and utilize the resources that you get from the bag, and then you put everything back and you rinse, rinse and repeat. And there's a certain number of actually additional bags that you have that you're going to be storing your stuff in yep. that you get. And that's kind of how you choose how much you want to dive. All right, what's the next one? That one over there. All right, the detective. Uh, the detective is really more spatial in that you're layering these transparent cards on top of each other, trying to match. Uh, certain symbols in order to solve cases. So you have to have the card be full, so no blank spaces. And there are also some um, some black spaces which you can utilize if you'd like as kind of a, a wild situation. But they require certain yes. rules yeah, in order to get rules. them. You have to have, I believe, two of them in order to, for them to function in some way. Yeah, yeah. And you'll be, for your actions, um, instead of just, just placing. placing and choosing the action, you'll place and determine how many actions you want to take. And the stopwatch, or the little watch, uh, where one of the actions is always covered, will have three revealed as your options that you can choose and from. And they change. And they change as, the, as time progresses. So you'll uh, not always even have a chance to solve a case. You have to time your actions accordingly. But yeah, and the way the way that it works is very simple, though. I mean, in reality, it's you take one of the actions. It's going to cost you time. The more time equals the more usage you get, and you just move the cards down from the top onto the bottom locations to fill up a card. Mm -hmm. You want you sets can of two. You also stack them on top of each other, which is cool. Right, you can take mm -hmm. the whole stack and move them, uh, and you get you can get sets of two and sets of three. Twos get you the smaller ones. Threes get you the bigger mm -hmm. ones. Uh, it's very straightforward. It's probably the most simple of all of, of these. Of all of these, yes. yeah, for sure. The next one, this one is the pastry chef. Uh, the way this one works is actually quite interesting. Uh, you're gonna have this weird mechanical uh, grid board that kind of rotates around. And, um, and this is a prototype, obviously. Yeah, so I yeah. had to be, it was a little finicky, but the one like, you're gonna get is gonna be nice. They're gears that rotate each other. But the way it works is pretty simple. You're gonna be basically moving around on the board. You're gonna be gathering these little, uh, I guess, pieces of dough. You're gonna be putting them mm -hmm. in the oven in certain areas. And then you are going to be hopefully rotating the middle section that allows all of these guys to move one section. And each of these little sections on each of the grids, when you have a chance to take the these little pieces of dough out, basically when they become something, you're going to get something. It could be frosting, it's going to be um, points uh, ascertained to a different specific color. So maybe I'm having points for green and I'll move green up two and green will actually then turn into a muffin. And then as I move up on this kind of grid here, as I get plus three or plus two, um, passing up certain dials, they're going to turn into larger ones. So you can kind of control what types and what colors mm -hmm. you get and how far along they are. You can also sell them undercooked, giving you corruption. You can sell mm -hmm. them um, at the, just the right space or yeah. you can upgrade them and then they're not ready mm -hmm. either. And you have the option of like manipulating the colors and choosing how you want them to move. And you can also manipulate uh, how fast it takes for them to get done and how fast it takes for them to upgrade. And there's a certain starting point for all of these guys, but they can be manipulated as well. And then frosting can go on top of these things, which can then allow you to sell to 
different customers. Usually you sell blue stuff to blue people and green stuff to green people, but with red frosting on a green item, you can sell it to a green or a red customer. And these frostings are unique and they only come with a certain number of them. And once they're gone, you'll get the ability to, what's that, what's that called with, there? To be with that fat. Yeah, they you can, have influence with that. You have faction. influence with that faction. You have to, yeah. after you're done with them, they're gone though. Uh, and also, additionally, after each action, you can choose to move a little heat meter across the board. And as, if you do that, you'll be allowed to rotate the dial once. But mm -hmm. as you keep doing it, you can start gaining corruption. And the only way to get rid of that corruption is by, oh, not corruption, but you get rid of the dial, make it go back down to normal, is if you spend a time to move this thing back down. Your to oven got to be. too hot. <laughs> so you need to like cool it down yeah. for a round. Uh, and that's basically how this thing works. It's either putting frosting down, it's either moving up the different colored pieces on this mm -hmm. oven track, or it's uh, heating the oven, changing the heat settings, and moving these dials down to make it easier to make smaller, upgrade to larger, and yeah. then make the full larger ones ready to go. Um, uh, this one's probably, I would say, the second easiest of the bunch, as far as at least understanding and how it works. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of choices, a lot of manipulation as to where you're mm -hmm. gonna be putting the different pieces and how you're gonna be rotating them and where you want them to be in the exact locations. So there's a little bit of thought processes to that as well. That's basically how all of these guys work in, in association summary, yep. with the base <laughs> game. So let's go ahead and cover them really quick and then uh, you can go ahead and pick up the game. So each of the characters uh, do bring a unique gameplay to Merchant's Cove. Yeah, none I of think... these are the same to what we played before. Yeah, it, it, for sure. And I think one thing I really liked about the pastry chef is the ability to add the frosting and be able to sell to multiple customers. Like I don't think any of the other characters have that ability, so it was really neat It's not we, cool. that we've played. It is really, uh, really uh, made it a lot easier for you, I think, to to sell uh all your items <laughs> but there was a cost to getting those things yeah and those so that made sense but yeah and it could have been that i actually instead of going up on the frosting i could have actually went and pushed more pastries out mm -hmm. and there's a cost to doing that as well so everything kind of has so a balance balanced, yes. yeah yeah it just it's just that if i choose to not want to make another green one or make another red one if i have that green one i can choose to get that red frosting instead which probably takes just about as much time mm -hmm. but it does give me a bonus and it does more, make it easier if i already have that out and there's no customer so i have more the ability flexibility to, yeah, yeah especially at the last round i'd yeah. say it's probably Good. The gears mechanisms are really cool. The way it all functions okay. is nice. How it works is very simple with all the actions. It's going back on the oven heater, rotating the thing, buying, and then, you know, the, the two main actions in the game, and then placing the cubes out. So there's placing the cubes, and then there's placing a cube where you want it to go, mm -hmm. and then taking the cubes off and doing what they say. And that's it. That's how it works. It's nice and easy. All the actions are also relative to the boards that everybody gets where you're replacing the different mercenaries and whatnot, which is nice as well. And uh, yeah, I really enjoyed this one. This was probably, I would say, maybe my favorite, maybe my second favorite. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think it's cool how, too, it's like, do I want to wait and turn the dial one or two more times? Oh, that's going to give me good stuff here, but maybe not here. And so you kind of have to... Um, you have to weigh those options as well. So it seemed like there were a lot of, of good choices to make when yes. playing the pastry chef. Yeah. Um, then we have the the diver over here. And the diver is, like I said, basically like quacks where you're going into the bag, you're pulling out the things, and then you're placing mm -hmm. them down, trying to gather as many as you can yeah. without going too deep unless but you're worth it. But first you're deciding which pack you want to use and how maybe how far you want to How far you want way. to go and how much yeah. you want to try and collect mm -hmm. without having to suffer too many of the consequences. Yeah. It's one of those people, game, the, the, the content that's basically like a push your luck, which is kind of cool. I feel like this, even this full set here, is going to give a wide variety of mm -hmm. different types of genres of games for people, um, even though the last ones had a ton as well, <laughs> uh, that will keep people like interested. So, like, oh, yeah. I know my wife really likes Quacks, and so this expansion would be mm -hmm. good because I want to play this worker placement type of a game with her, so I'm going to go ahead and make sure I get this one because uh, that one has the yeah. diver. I know Alicia played the diver because she's she doesn't um, well at least she doesn't think of herself as like that spatial visual thinker so this one seemed like a good choice for her. Yeah. Um, and then we have the detective over here. Uh, yes. This is a really cool, like, movement placement type of a more, game. More spatial, where you can see, okay, this is going to cover that. This is going to fill that spot. And, it's for those mystic veil and canvas type <laughs> lovers. You know, you're covering the cards and putting covers and trying to get all as many possible combinations mm -hmm. as possible to get the things that you want to sell. And it's pretty straightforward. That one is kind of, I would say, the least complex. Put, put, put. And I mean, there is like, 
how you put and when you put and how you choose to utilize your actions is very important. Mm -hmm. But as it stands, how it works and functions, you're just like, okay, okay, okay. this is what I need to do. I can do this or I can do this. And you, you then you just figure out how exactly you want to What's the best layer, combination What's the best order to do it all in? <laughs> yeah. That's actually a really cool one. It's something I probably would like to, that's the one I didn't plan. That probably one I would like mm -hmm. to play next just to see the complexity of it and how I can kind of change and move and mold it. Uh, and then the final one is the mushroom farmer. So definitely also very spatial and planning ahead a lot because you want to basically kind of stagger um, the insects so that they can do the proper thing at the proper time and have the right movement tile ready so that they can go as, as far as possible. Most uh, complex And not one. block your other insects. <laughs> That's like the most complex one. I think so because there's the four different insects moving around and then there's different stages that the soil is at. And you have the different and actions the different colors, you have to choose. And the different actions and when you want to pull those back. So uh, There's a lot going on in and that If you one. want somebody, if somebody likes a, uh, a brain burner a little bit more, mm -hmm. then that would be mm -hmm. one that, to take a look at, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that would probably be my least favorite of the bunch. I'd be more concerned about trying to do that one because I probably would fail miserably like, trying to oh. do it. There, I as you play though, like I learned, like okay, I, if I had done this, it would have been better because then this wouldn't be blocking here, or I could have gone this way. Um, so it's definitely something you learn and you get better as you play. So that part I like about it. Okay, um, so that's basically covered all these guys here, and then we'll just do a quick re review summary, basically. Uh, did I like this expansion? Did you like this expansion? I think the answer is a pretty resounding yes. I would say there are certain things about the game that are going to be changed, um, or have been changed mm -hmm. since we've got it. There's probably some little changes to the rules or tweaks that are going to make things easier, especially with the diver, to make it more clear and concise. Especially with the other rule books that we got. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so I, I feel, feel like most of that's fixed. Every I played the original Missions Cove, and all the expansions expansions, they all were easy, yeah. all made sense. And I didn't, I'm not super yeah. really concerned about that, which is why I'm not even going to really bring it up too much. Um, but I guess just a little bit on making sure things are concise with these guys. Making but, sure we played it correctly yes. as, as intended. <laughs> but if I look at this expansion as a whole, are they different and more and unique compared to the others? And the answer is astoundingly yes. Mm -hmm. um, are these fun? And the answer is yes. I would say my favorites are, of course, these three here. That one's, I want to try it first. I haven't tried it, so <laughs> I don't know yet, but it seems like it might be cool. Uh, I didn't have really any issues with this expansion. I thought it was a lot of fun. Uh, I'm actually very excited to see the retail version. Uh, mm -hmm. The quality of components is excellent. This is all handmade and put together by hand so uh prototype if, if you can assume <laughs> yeah. what this is going to look like when it's done you can assume that it's going to be based good. on the base game of merchant's cove which is excellent mm -hmm. i i strongly resoundingly uh, suggest you getting this expansion if you bought any previous other expansions from merchant's coves this is one to also pick up as well if you just have the base game I would say this is actually Good worth it as mm -hmm. well because it's going to give you a lot of expansions like in a singular box. I variety of gameplay. Like there's something for lots of different types of gamers, which is really the strength of Merchant's Cove is yes. that everyone's kind of playing the different mini game, but we're also all playing together and competitively and everyone can kind of choose what their craft is, right? What, uh, what they want to, how they want to play that and try to be the best master craftsman. Yes. <laughs> This or game woman. is excellent. <laughs> I have a high recommendation for this game. It's getting my seal of approval. Once again, this expansion gets my seal of approval. We all had a great amount of fun with this one, and I'm very excited to see the fully finished version. If you have any even an inkling for Merchant's Clove, I suggest you take a look at it because it is really good. Thank you guys. Definitely check out the links in the description below if you want to see our hot, our initial review and how to play and our playthrough of the original Merchant's Cove. Those will be linked down in the description, as well as links to the current Kickstarter page for Mastercraft. Definitely, while you're down there, hit that like button if you like this video and subscribe to see more videos. Hit that bell notification, see more reviews and live uh, and our playthroughs as well. You can join us live for our playthroughs every Sunday, 6.30 p.m. Pacific time on Twitch. We're on Twitch now. Check us out. Join, join the party there and interact as we play games just like this one. Yep. We almost <laughs> did play this one. In fact, we still yes, might. We might. We might. This is a good one. <laughs> And of course, check out unfilteredgamer.com for blog reviews as well as giveaways. Thank you guys so much for watching and we look forward to crafting with you next, next time. time.